So what we have here is we have the category, groups, and the views. And you can set this up. This is a, a little more complicated than some set us. We have application uh, categories, business resource categories, um, infrastructure and operations. So again, I'll pick on the basis team. So for this project in January, I needed 70 hours is what I forecasted, uh, 110 in February. But really, when the planning came to bear, this is what the planned resource assignments were, the actual resource assignments, and then the actual hours that have come in on the project. Same thing with the database team here. So I would just enter this data. And again, this is at the project level. You can do it at the department in the project without pulling in named resources. So very quickly at that portfolio level, you still get quite a bit of visibility. I can go ahead and just look at, um, kind of compare, do a quick chart. Pretty much anywhere in here you can always do charting inside of PPM or NC projects. And you can get into more fancy charts. Hopefully these colors come across okay in the webinar. They are all different shades of purple and blue. So I have a forecasted demand, plan assignment, and resource assignment. We can pull in actuals into here as well. Fully, uh, uh, fully configurable. These are all standard reports out of the box. So that is at the item level at uh, the project level, the planning. So uh, department or resource pool. Let's go ahead and we'll jump into C projects. So um, jump into roles and see how you can even take it down another notch. You don't have to do this uh, to get PPM working. So what I have here is I have the engineer role, engineering one, and I have Bill, Robert, and Tom, and I can see various calculated demand upon these engineers and what kind of status they have. And it'll give me a status of whether they're over allocated or if there's a demand, but maybe the portfolio manager or the resource manager has not assigned those resources or hard booked those to a project. So that will also give us some of these indicator lights in there. And this is really taking it down uh, to level three maturity and beyond when you do the role and actual resource name assignments. So let's go ahead, we're back in the project. Um, before I show financial information very quickly, let's go ahead and jump back to sub-portfolio of internal IT and let's just look at how we do the supply. I do capacity planning. There's my window. Um, this is the supply and I can do this by, and you'll notice it all kind of matches applications, business, uh, basis, DBA. And you can calculate the supply demand up of many things. Um, not all supply will be available or projects. You may have some, maybe you hard, hard book it to support as an example or to break fix maybe 50% of the time. So that can all be accounted for in here and other calculations that can come in from HR, HCM, as well to calculate your available supply for that resource pool or department and cost center. And here I can just see the demand placed on them, what's the actual planned assignments, you can really create these different views to see all the different data that you'd like to see. You can also keep it simpler, just available, demand, and what's the, the actuals. So it's really up to you and your maturity level. As you grow, you can get into the more detail. And it's that fast to set up. If I go ahead and increase this, I've got it locked right now, but the um, you can actually increase your supply of your FTE by department or resource pool very, very quickly. So that is the capacity planning at a very high level. We had a more detailed webinar back in January, which I invite you. And I'll ask uh, uh, Hamanchu as well to send out the link with the survey and that spreadsheet 
go ahead and send a link to that detailed capacity planning and capacity assignment uh, webinar, which was very, very focused on that. So I know we're hitting a lot of highlights in the short amount of time we have. We're going to go into capacity planning now, or financial planning, for the PPM project. Just to kind of see how that looks. And you'll notice capacity planning and from a structure and format point of view, everything's in the same period that we set up by the subportfolio as a default, the currency, USD. But we can also go ahead and uh, set up typically capital and expense uh, for labor, material. Maybe you have stuff you can depreciate if you're a public company uh, over 60 months and you want to track that separately from maybe labor that's doing training or other items that you classify as expense internally with your um, accounting group, depending on your accounting rules. And then here we can go into the uh, budget dollars, what's the original budget, the current budget. You can do forecasts, plan costs, you can do commitments and actuals. This is all configurable for how much detail you really want to capture uh, materials, overhead. You can, again, do different things with uh, hardware and software as well. It just really depends on your uh, methodology and accounting rules. You can also budget, drive budget from external items from ECC, um, or you can budget at the department or cost center level, just depending on how you want to go forward, but it's definitely possible. I can just go in here real quick and show you a short uh, chart. So you can kind of see a quick chart that pulls up. And they, these are more of the standard reports. I'll show you a little nicer one here at the end as we wrap up here in just a minute. So I just have actuals and planned costs by month and dollars. And you can get uh, forecast in here as well beyond plan, it's just really an option up to you. And I can spread this out over a longer duration. I can spread this out over two years versus just a six month view as well. All right, so that is um, capacity and financial planning. And I want to emphasize, I know I've kind of gone through this quickly, but you can do it at a department project level you get a lot of low-hanging fruit that way. Or as you saw, you can dive into the nitty-gritty and classify and categorize by capital expense and get into those lower levels. Same thing with capacity. You can get into the detail on um, by resource name if you so desire. Just depending upon, I highly, again, take, take the little quiz we're going to send out to you. Uh, make sure your organization change management model is ready to absorb that. Go ahead and close out of here. And we'll go back to actually our main portfolio management page. And what I want to go ahead and uh, i got about a minute left. <laughs> so I want to go ahead and the portfolio items to show you this last report and some of the other reports that are available to you. What's different about 5.0 as well is there's a lot more business intelligence in a Business Objects Explorer actually built in to 5.0. But in this case, I just want to compare. I want to compare the PPM project, and I'm going to compare not the EH6, but I'll go ahead and do this ECC upgrade project. Just click on recording and just ask for a quick um, financial analysis just on those items. And you can do this within any as many as you want and selected the entire uh, sub-portfolio or even the global portfolio. And when you highlight, you can also drill down in these reports and it'll bring up the uh, item or the project pretty much in any report. This one shows 350,000 planned, running a little bit over budget, 390,000 actual cost. And of course, as we can see here, nothing is posted from an actual cost point of view for ECC6. So this is a, a very good pro uh, just one of those good reports that you can quickly um, uh, put together. Let's 
go ahead and close out of here. Last thing I want to show you uh, before I hand it back to uh, Tom is just here are some other numerous reports that you can see that are standard out of the box. You get the strategic alignment. Um, you can do versioning, capacity planning. There are many, many, many views of the reports, and the information is fairly quick to put in. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Tom, who's going to talk about, to wrap us up and talk about maturity level. Okay, thanks, John. Um, so John alluded to earlier on the the spreadsheet that you can help you can use to help calculate your maturity level. Now, um, going back to the early days of PPM consulting, when when it was a new solution, it was really really odd for me personally, and for a lot of people in in similar situations, were implementing PPM, and that coming from strong SAP consulting backgrounds with good success rates, finding that PPM projects were more prone to failure than others. More surprising because they were actually being implemented in, in project-centric organizations with good project management capability, be it IT or capital or product development, but especially in IT. And what we found was that Typically, there, there ends up a mismatch between the maturity level, the process maturity level of the organization, and the, the final technical maturity level of the PPM product. Because PPM has got deep, deep functionality down to level five maturity level, but very few companies operate at that level. Most companies are in the one to two range. And when you leverage maturity level five, technology in your maturity level two company, you're going to have implementation issues after go live. And so what we did was we, we figured out a way whereby we could act more like consulting policemen, keeping you on track with your implementation, landing the technology at the, the level of your business process maturity, and then providing a roadmap to enable you to go hand in hand and increase your maturity level to where it ought to be. Now, not every company needs to get to maturity level four or five. So it depends how important, how critical these projects are to the financial health of your company. So this is the maturity level chart. And what we do is we figure out whereabouts in the chart you are, and then we break it down into the various processes and we work very, very hard with you to land the technology at that level of maturity and then provide a roadmap for growth so that you can, you can evolve and continually improve your PMO practices. And so what we do there is we, we go to market with three um, very aggressively scoped and priced um, solutions. So based on maturity level one, two, and three, maturity level one go to market is, is a seven week duration um, very short, very condensed, just basic, out-of-the-box PPM. Get one single inventory of your project, stand up, very basic portfolio and project management. Maturity level two is a 10-week turnaround time. Again, these are, these are five-figure implementation service costs, so not expensive by any means compared to what you're more familiar with for IT projects or for SAP projects. And level two just takes you to that next level. And then finally, level three, 13-week duration, includes closed-loop resource management, integration to your time entry solution if you have it, integration obviously to ECC in the back end through internal orders, and HR integration if you're using HR for your um, human resources. So very fixed very um, fixed duration, fixed price, and we have a whole unique methodology for approaching these based on our experience. 